it's me, Jen Evers, with Koality Crafts, and welcome to another Free Play Friday, where we do all kinds of paper techniques and card folds and different things, and I teach you how to do it step-by-step, -step, tutorial style. Now, there's also a live chat during these times on Fridays and also Wednesdays when I do the 10-minute card challenge, so I want to make sure that you guys know that I'll be talking to people on the screen. It'll maybe look like I'm talking to myself, and that's okay. Um, so this is a family-friendly channel, so feel free to bring, um, invite your other friends to come in. Uh, some people invite their their cats and, and their dogs and their children and everyone who's in the family. So husbands are also welcome, and I always say hello crafters because it doesn't matter whether you're male or female you can craft and it is we're all on a different journey so just do things then at your pace with what you have in your stash and i'll try to do my best to give you tips and tricks for everything that i can think of so my goal is to make this really easy for beginners but also to make it fun for people like me who are intermediate to advanced that just want to enjoy doing crafty things together so we've got julie prince here today if you're live with us in the chat you'll see that she's in blue and that's how we know that she's a moderator kathy godwin hello carol and kim and sandy and christy i'm so glad that you guys could join me today for this fabulous uh free play friday so we were sort of expecting to have maybe a two hour delay or at least at the very very least like icy roads this morning and there was nothing <laughs> <laughs> so we had like 45 degree weather until about noon one-ish where it dropped all the way down to 30 and started raining and it must have all dried up dried up because there was regular school today as normal as usual and we still have not gotten our snow day <laughs> i always look forward to the snow days it's like just this little extra vacation day that we get however my position and others like me we do not get paid if school gets canceled so it's like a you could choose to use your pto if you want but you don't get otherwise you don't get paid oh my sarika hello from athens greece 2 a.m on your side wow wow hearts for you thanks for joining us hi elise grammy pammy who else have i missed monica aya is it aya or aija I might even be saying it wrong. Hi, Pam. So glad to see all of you guys here. I'm just going to chat for a little bit. We usually start at five minutes after the hour. If you're not familiar with how this channel runs, um, Wednesdays for the 10 minute card video, I usually start a little bit quicker because it's a short one. Um, hi, Deanna. Oh, storm warning. That stinks. Hello from Canada. Add a, add a doll. Linda from Metro Detroit. I'm back, yay! Okay, so you're, this is like the stuff that you're gonna need right here. You're definitely gonna need a paper trimmer, but I don't usually bring mine in um, into focus because it's really big, so I have it off to the right. Maybe someday I'll figure out how to do another camera or something so you can see that. But I use this one from Fiskars and I love it. It folds in half. And it has a two bar sliding rotary blade that's self sharpening so i never have to replace that this one i have linked so if you're looking for a really good one that you can invest in i would highly recommend this one the only thing i don't like about it if you have a hard time measuring in between here where there's no measurements listed that might give you a little bit of trouble it goes from five and a half to six so technically um, you should be able to take that split and use that as another quarter inch but if you have really really hard time with that kind of stuff that might throw you off a bit but i absolutely love it i use this cutter for everything the feline family made it Woo -hoo! miss super klutz hello hi jane all right so I mentioned the trimmer. You're going to need some washi tapes just because I decided to put washi tape around mine. I might do a lot more with washi tape today. I haven't really decided. Um, I did put B, the B, B E A, B B right here, this little image. If you want her, him, it, <laughs> you can get this image on my website. It's listed below in the supply list if you're looking for that one. So when you take off the top, well, let me just finish saying this. You might need a 
ruler. You may need a pencil. Um, you're definitely going to need some kind of double-sided adhesive. You could use your ATG tape. Um, there's not a lot of taping to this, so it's totally up to you. And six by six paper because we're making a mini explosion. Now, I just want to preface this ahead of time that, okay, we've got three minutes. My cover on here is bigger than it needs to be. If I squish this together really hard, do you see all the extra room I have in this cap? That's because I'm using some pretty thick paper to do mine and so it doesn't close completely it kind of you know bulges out so I made my cap to accept it bulging a little bit I'll show you how to measure that it's really easy you basically just measure this square right here and then an, an, an inch on each side and that's how you make your cover so if you want to make it with thinner paper so that this closes really tightly, you can make a much tighter cover. Completely up to you. Hey, raggedy girl. New sub for first time live, whoop, whoop. CBJK2929, hearts for you. Let us know what you want us to call you because I'm not really sure who you are with that name, CBJK2929. Um, so, all right, let's get down to it. When you open this up, some of them uh, pop open extensively. The only reason mine doesn't is because I left a lot of my paper in here, as you notice. You can cut all four of these corners completely off and it'll pop open even more. But I decided to use some different styles. So like I only cut off these corners. You can definitely see all the papers. And then I put a little like book that opens in the middle here and it says just because you're the bee's knees. And I added some gems. So that's my explosion. You can make this practically any way you want. Mine closes up like that and then has the cover on top. Like I said, it's a bigger cover to let the box expand to kind of hold the cover on. If you use thinner papers, you can just measure the bottom of your box here and add an inch on all four sides to create your cap. It's pretty simple. I'll walk you through it. So we've just got one minute left. Uh, I decided that since we're heading into February and Valentine's Day is on everyone's minds, I grabbed a Valentine. What is this one called? Um, crate paper. Love 14. I don't know. Maybe that's what it's called. You can see it right here. That's kind of blurry. I turned off the auto focus because it makes me nuts. So I'm just going to go ahead while we have a just, oh, it's 5.05. So let's get started. I'm going to grab some colors that I like here. You're going to need three for the inside of extra scraps if you want to make this little middle part. So one, two, three pieces for the inside and another piece for the cap. So four pieces of six by six. So I'm going to say this, I want to maybe be my outside. Oh, maybe I want that to be the outside. Maybe that, maybe this for my outside, this for my cover. So if this is going to be the outside, you won't see that. That'll be the inside of that. And then I need a couple for the inside, inside. So this one. You can use double-sided papers too if you like. And what other ones do I want to use? Oh, the hearts are cute. Let's go with hearts. So I'm kind of laying them on top like this. You're going to see a little bit of this one and a little bit of this one. It depends on how you layer yours as to what you want, what you want to be seen. I think I'm going to just move this one up, put the gray one in between to mix up those colors. That will look cool. So that's kind of my plan right now. I have these extra little tops on mine. So I have to go ahead and cut all those off quick. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm measuring them out to six inches and cutting off that edge. So 
just make sure that yours are six by six. And I suppose the other thing is, if you don't want to do six by six, you could do four by four, three by three. You can make them super, super duper, absolutely mini if you want to. That'd be really cute. So this is going to be my outside. That needs to be scored. This is going to be, these are going to be my three pieces inside. You don't need three pieces. You really literally only need probably two because that will actually make one, two, three. But I'm considering this is white that I might want to add another layer. So I might put this one in here. Now I'm going to set this one aside for the top. Make sure, make sure, make sure, don't make the mistake that I do. Make sure you are taking all your layers here that are going to make this box, the bottom box part, okay, this part right here. Do all of your scoring first, okay? You're going to score them all the same. So I'm going to show you this is a six by six. Okay, so here's my ruler. Six on this side. My six is right here by my thumb. Six on this side. We're going to score these at two. See the two? two, two, two. They're all scored at two. So we're going to score them at two and four and then two and four. And I'll show you that in just a second. Score everything first. Don't cut. I made that mistake a couple of times. So I have my little one here. Let me pull out a stylus because those are always make your life easier. I don't like the plastic ones. So take your papers and put them in. I'm just going to double check that my cutter was right. We're on six. Okay. Score at two and four. Okay. And turn your paper 90 degrees and score at two and four. You should have, and you can go ahead and just, you know, press these in. crisscross pattern like a tic-tac-toe board. You see that? should have that on each one. So go ahead and take each piece that you have and score it at two and four. 90 degree turn, score at two and four. Now, if you're a beginner, you're probably following along with me. If you're an advanced one, you've probably figured it all out already and you're moving on or you've come for the community and the chat and the hanging out, which is awesome. Hi, Susan Baker, we're glad you made it. When we're done here, I'm gonna take a, po a photo, probably the same thumbnail that you saw, go over to Quality Crafts on Facebook and make an album so that whatever you guys make with me today, or maybe it's another day down the road or whatever, come over to Quality Crafts and look under photos, then albums, and look for the album that's labeled Mini Explosion Box. We've got one more. This is my cover. And then put the picture of what you made to inspire us. So scoring at two and four, turning 90 degrees and scoring at two and four. You can make whatever, however many layers you want. I guess I'm going four today. You can do just three. It's not a big deal. If you look at this one, it's one, this white one, because that's the outer one. Now, you don't have to worry about that if you have double-sided paper, right? Then there's one layer here, so I'm counting one, two. This green one would be three, and that's all you really need. This would technically be my fourth, but I just decided to add that in there. You could put a circle in there. You could stamp all this stuff inside here. You could do whatever you want. That's the point where you're just going to decide how much embellishing do you want to do. I made mine really simple because that's just easier when I only have an hour. But, I mean, these are like mini albums. You could spend hours and days and weeks on these things if you really wanted to. The only other thing that I did do 
because I'm using a thicker paper. Is you see how mine bend in the corners here? So there's a bend in the corners going out from the middle, the little square. Let me flip it over. That might be easier to see. There's a square in the center of each one. And these four corners, there is a mark, a fold mark going out. Do you see that? You will probably have to score those with this thicker paper because it's not going to automatically bend for you. I really had to make that go. So I'm going to show you with my, I have a mark on this one. I could probably mark this other one too, but let me grab my bigger one. You can do it, I'll show it to you two different ways. I have a black mark going down here, and that's so that I can, if I can see out the top here, my black line extends up here. If you put the corner on the, oh, you can't see that far. Hold on. There we go. If you have your corner on the black line and you have your corner up here on the black line, you should be able to go, make, make sure I'm lined up here. You should be able to go from the corner of this box right here and score it straight up to there and then from this box straight down to there this is the quickest easiest way to do it and then you've got a line there that you can fold in okay and you've got one on the other side too as well that's the quickest way if you've got a line on yours if you don't have that but you have one of these you could do the same thing on here. I'm gonna flip mine over here because I want that to go. Make sure that your the corner of your paper here is lined up with your cutting line, and the bottom corner is lined up with its cutting line. Ah, I bumped it. Then take your score and score from that line into the corner of that box and then from the bottom up to the corner of the box. There is a square in the center that you do not need to score. You should only be scoring these four corners from that square out. And then just bring that and fold it in. Fold it in on all four because the box is going to be folding inwards like this. Okay, they're all going to want to fold inwards like that. So you'd want to do that to all of your pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to get rid of this one and I'm going to use my regular score right here. Now you might decide to cut all these off. If you decide to cut all these off, you don't have to do any of this scoring and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. I just want to give you options. Chronic Crafter Angela, hello! Changed your channel name? You oh, okay. You know what? I am not going to remember that. I just know me. So you'll just have to keep saying, don't forget I'm Angela. <laughs> all right. Now you can go ahead and do that with all of them. If you don't want to, these are going to be going the opposite way. You can just fold them in reverse. It doesn't really matter. This is my outside. I wanted my box to be floral. So I'm turning that this way. So they're gonna fold in. My next layer I decided would be this one. So these would fold in. But now if I don't wanna have so much bulk, I wanna cut these out, I can do that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. I'm gonna cut these four corners right off. And then you can save these corners too if you didn't already um, mark them up like I did with scores. And you can use these to decorate as well, which is really fun. Should be four. 
I'm doing four today, Susan, but you really can get away with three or even two. All right, before I get carried away and show you all the other things you can do, I just wanna mention now, at this point, you can make them all like this so that they all fold in. That's what I did with this one. Except for this green one, you can see I cut off two corners because I wanted more of the floral pattern to show. I hope that's making sense. This was just added extra. This one has one, two, three layers, okay? This one I'm making today has one, two, three, four. You don't have to do four. Four might be a little bit much, but I want to show you some differences. Now, right now, they're all exactly the same height. With a real explosion box, you would make them slightly smaller by a quarter of an inch. One, two, three. See how you can see a little bit of it hanging out the edge there? So what you want to do, and I'm going to just move this one to the side because I've already cut it, is you're going to want to take these and cut off an extra quarter of an inch on all, all four sides. It's okay. This one is six by six, so this one you want to be five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So take your cutter, and I'm gonna use this one so you can see what I'm doing, and cut it at five and three quarters. By five and three quarters. I'm gonna show you what how, after I cut it, what it looks like. It's just a little bit smaller than the other one all the way around. You see that? So that's what we're doing. Now let me make sure that I have how I want this to go. I want, ooh, that one, that might work out. That looks really pretty like that. And then if I bring in my pink one, that would be cool. Now, I already cut my corners off. That's why I said make sure that you do um, all of your all of your scoring first, okay? <laughs> do not forget to score first because if you cut them, then you're going to be like, where do I score then? And you'll have to line them up, and it's just a mess. Make sure that you score them all at two and four, two and four, and then start cutting. So I cut this one down. I think I might even leave this gray one that big just so that there's no white. I really like that. I like the look of that. I might have to cut that one. This one I didn't cut yet, so let's go ahead and cut this one. I'm going to want it smaller than this one, and I just said that this one, this one is six by six. Uh-oh, I've locked up. Okay. This one is six by six. This one is five and three quarters by five and three quarters. So this one is going to be five and a half by five and a half. Now, because I cut some off of it, of course, it's going to be a little bit harder to figure this out. Just use the two longest pieces to help you figure it out. So we're going to want five and a half. And I have to eyeball mine because I cut some of mine off. Oh, this isn't going to work because I already cut my pieces off. So I just, I'm just i going to do all mine at that length, I think. Never mind, ignore me. Make sure you do your cutting before you chop everything up. This is my third layer, so I'm not too worried about it. I'll do a review as soon as I'm done with this, because I think I probably lost a few of you. So my, this one's going to be small on the inside. That's cute. All right. Let's do a little review here. I still have a full six by six here that's going to be my cover. I've saved that to the side. Then I decided that I'm going to have a six by six, a five and three quarter by five and three quarter, and a five and a half by a five and a half. But I already cut off the corners, so this one ended up to be a little bit different. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to save that and do one for you because I know some of you people are going to get confused. I don't want anyone confused. 
Oh, I was hoping I'd have another one of them, but I don't. Oh, this one will work. This one will work. So let's do a quick review. One six by six here. This is my cover. I'm saving that. And then I have a six by six, a five and three quarter by five and three quarter. And then this will be a five and a half by five and a half. That makes more sense. Hopefully I haven't lost anybody. I have to cut off that extra edge so that I have a six by six. And score my page at two and four. Two and four. Two and four. Always remember to score first, then cut. This one's going to be five and a half by five and a half. Where's my cover? The next thing we did, I'm kind of in the middle of a review here. The next thing we did was we used a line here, right? To put our corners on. And to score out from this square, out on the four corners. So you could do that corner and this corner and then turn it 90 degrees, line it up and do those corners. And I'm talking about these right here. Okay. This is my box. So this one's going to be folding in this way. I hope I haven't lost some of you guys. I feel like I went back and just redid the whole thing. And you know what? I think I told you wrong on the cutting too. We have to make sure that when we're cutting these, we cut the same amount off of every side to make it even. So I'm gonna have to cut this one just a little bit smaller. I wanna show you what I'm talking about. So if you look at this one right now, this way, this side is a little bit shorter than this side, so I need to take some off. I'm just gonna go ahead and measure this and make sure I have it right. One and a half inches by one and a half inches. Let me see what this one's right. Oh, so close. Wait a minute. Let's take our shortest side. One and a half. Yep. Okay. I'm going to make sure that I do one and a half on this one. Cause I didn't tell you how to cut right. Oh gosh, I hope you guys didn't waste a bunch of paper. Let me go one and a half. One and a half. Where is my mark? There we go. We go one and a half. So close. Okay. And then I'm going to do this side. Yeah, we got one and a half. And one more side. Here we go, one. I'm gonna pause here for just a second and ask if there's any questions, because I'm sure I probably lost a few people. All, I'm, I'm just going to tell you right out. I had all the measurements and everything written down and I lost my cheat sheet. So I had to fly off the seat of my pants today. So this one's my box. That will totally work. We've still got space around that one and this one will fit on my card. But I'm just going to cut a little bit off of every edge of this side too. So this one is the same size as my outer box and I don't want it to be quite that. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off like an eighth 
of an inch off of each side to make it just a little bit smaller. So there's one, two, three, that one got a little kitty wampus. and four. There we go. So I've got one layer, two layers, three layers. And do I, did I get rid of that one? This is, this would be my fourth layer if I choose to add it. All right, I'm not gonna worry about that one right now. That might be my inside where I add my stuff. But I think we're good with that. So I wanna make sure that I've got my bottom piece. This is gonna be the outside of the box, so that's gonna be the colored portion. I'll bring in the one that I just did, the outer box. So this one's gonna be floral, okay? And then my next one in is gonna be my gray. And then my next one in is going to be my hearts. I'm pretty sure I messed up the hearts too. So let me just double check the measurement on this one before we start gluing stuff down. I've also got a one and a half on this one. I'm not really close. No, this one looks good. Okay, so we're good to use that one. And then like I said, this one was a little bit extra one, so maybe I'll use that other one for my sentiment, this one on the inside and then I can just fold those in as a box to put a sentiment on the inside that pops out. I'm just gonna fold this over a little bit so it matches a little bit better. That will be cute. So I'll save that one. And now if I don't wanna have to do all these corners like this, then I now I would chop the corners off because I've got everything cut and everything um, scored. Let's see, I'm gonna do that one. I want to keep the gray one full and I think I'm going to keep this one full as well. I just, but I want the corners chopped. So I'm going to go ahead and just chop these corners off. I hope I didn't like totally confuse you guys. I really messed up on the measurements a bit, but I lost my cheat sheet. So I'm kind of flying blind tonight. And I have company coming, so my brain is all on like, what do I need to clean before they get here? <laughs> okay, so this one's gonna look really kind of similar to this one. I do, I did corner, I did uh, corner chomp these, but I cut off the corner of the green ones. But I don't want that look for this one because I like these hearts. I want those hearts to stay here. Okay, so I'm going to need to do the corners if I keep them. So I'm gonna have to bring my score back in my little mini scoreboard here and actually you know what this is easier because I don't have a black line on that one and I don't really want to add one because I have a black line on my big one already so I'm just going to use this one and line it up the corners each of the corners on the the cut line and then use my stylus to score this out and then all you do is turn 90 degrees and do the same thing for those. And this is going to be inside the box this way, so your fold is gonna go in. On your fold lines if it's not going in because it shouldn't be too hard to push in. You just might have to re-fold um, on some of those lines. Like I didn't fold these very well so I'm just going to refold that. Then it should go in pretty easily. So these should all be coming in just like the other box did. Let me move this over quick. So this, this one comes in and this one comes in. Okay. If you want yours to pop open wider, then you're gonna need to cut a lot off. 
cut your quarters off. I'm sure if you've seen other explosion box, they only have like this side, this side, this side, and this side. They cut all the corners off so that bulk is gone. But I like to see all the patterns on the inside. So I left mine, so mine is a little bit poofier. I hope that makes sense. I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, but if you don't, let me know. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and do the corners of these as well. Only I chopped off the corners, so I'm just gonna eyeball it. You know, I'm gonna flip it over so I can see my lines better. I just can't discern them on the other side. It's pretty close. Yeah, I'm going to redo my folds going in so that those will fold in easier and then push them in much simpler. All right, so mine are all going in. Now the only place I'm going to glue these at, if you look at these, they're not all completely glued down to one another because then it gives them, it gives it a lot more texture. Looks like, I looks like I accidentally cut one. You see that? Or there's a cut here. Oh no, my paper just got, my paper just kind of split, I think. Anyways, the only place we're gonna glue is right in the center square. That makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. So go ahead and use your favorite adhesive. I pulled out my double-sided, but I think I'm just gonna use a little bit of wet glue here so I've got some wiggle space. And then let this fall in here. And what I do is I bring up the sides to make sure that I'm right in the square, then then push down. So if you have, if you're not sure if you're in that square, push up two sides and then the other two sides so you know you're lined up, then push in the square. Make sure that it's going down. And then go ahead and just put glue on the other next square. And do the same thing with the middle one. I'm not sure, so I'm just going to go ahead and put these sides up, make sure that I'm resting right in the middle. And then push that one down. And you can do all sorts of stuff with the stuff that's on the inside here. I'm just going to go ahead and close these in and give this a little push. Just so that it closes in a little bit. Now this is going to it still springs out, which is why I'm going to make my cover a little bit forgiving. I'm not going to make it super tight so it, it won't fit. I'm going to show that again as well to so people that missed the beginning. I'm using really thick cardstock and I have some really heavy layers here because I haven't cut the corners off. So when I push mine in, it's pretty poofy. So here's my lid and I'm going to put that on and show you that if I squeeze this box together, you have a lot of extra room here, okay? You don't, I made it so that when it, ex, it poofs out on its own, it expands into that cap and it stays on. And that's how I did mine. So let's hope without my cheat sheet that I can get this one correct for you. So here is the one that we just created, very similar. It's gonna fold in on itself like this, but it's very springy, so it's gonna need a little extra. Normally what you would do is if this was really thin, you would just measure your, your box, your square here, which should be two by two, correct? Because we used a six by six. Let me show you with my thing here. Two by two, right? Because you would add an extra inch on each side. So if this is two, We'd add an extra inch here, that's three, and an extra inch here, that's four. Same on the other side. So you'd use four by four. I'm gonna use like four by four and like, 
I don't know, what did I do for this one? Like four and just a little bit. I don't think quite four and a quarter. Let me just check. Maybe I did add an extra quarter. This one is one, two and a half. And I only did my sides at three quarters inch. So you guys can adapt that as well. So three quarters and three quarters is one and a half. One and a half plus two and a half. Two and a half, three and a half. That is four. I did four. Seems to me I went quite a bit bigger than that. Am I measuring this wrong? I have three quarters of an inch there, and across the top I have two and a half. So I scored mine at two and a half, that's why. I did a four by four, but I scored it at two and a half instead of two. So here's the bottom of my box, which is two by two. I did two and a half, which would give you an extra bunch on each side. So let's go ahead and do that with this one. I'll use my other um, cutting. Where did I put that guy? Here, I'll use this cutter so you can see what I'm talking about. So I did four by four. Let's move this all the way out to four. And then by four, which is what we originally measured. But then when I had to score, instead of scoring an inch, where'd my little guy go? Uh, instead of scoring a full inch, because I want the square in the middle to be bigger, I only scored at three quarters of an inch. So here's the inch mark. Whoop. I'm only going to score at three quarters. So that's going to give me a little bit shorter of a lid edge here. And then turn and score at three quarters. And we're going to do this all the way around. And this is how you make a basic lid. And turn and score at three quarters. That way you've got now... Yes, absolutely. You don't need to use cardstock. The thinner the paper, the more it's going to spring out. I just happen to really like this cardstock, so I'm trying to use some of it up. So now you can see we're going to put this together, but we have a quarter inch lid on, on sides, and then we've got a two and a half by two and a half. So this is how you put your lid together. You just cut, cut here, turn, and cut, turn, and cut, turn and cut and then each one of those little tabs is going to get glue on it so you put a little bit of glue here and then you fold it in and hold it shut this is going to take me just a few seconds because i want to make sure this glue adheres i'm going to go with my thicker bottle here put this one this one's really runny sometimes i want it to be kind of runny and other times i need it a little bit thicker this one's a little bit harder to squeeze out, but it's thicker glue and it might dry a little quicker. Thanks, Kathy. I mentioned that in the beginning, but I did not give an example. Instead of using pattern paper, Kathy was saying, um, especially for those of you guys at home that can't see the chat, that you can use regular printer paper or you know white paper that you have and use your stamps. And create a really cool, you know, your own paper, your own style, whatever you want that project to be for. It doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. This could be a really cute birthday box or an an happy anniversary or a wedding. And maybe you want to put money on the inside. So there's my lid. Let's see if it fits. Let's see if I didn't stray you in the wrong way. Okay, so here's our box. I'm going to squish this together and see if we can't get this lid on. There we go. So my lid has extra space for that to pop out into. Okay. If you make the lid too tight, you might not be able to get it all squished tight enough to get it in there. So I made it a little bit bigger. And you have to play with it a little bit. Sometimes they pop up depending on how much you got in there. And then all I did was take that and decorate it, which is this one. And here's my cover. This was the original one. So we've got a bunch of layers in here. 
and then I added in the little B thing because my little image B, the B is on the outside of this one. So when we put that cover on and let it expand, we've got the B. And I did one of my homemade, my little DIY, um, what do you call those? Wobbles. So he wobbles quite a bit. It's a pretty great wobble. Okay, and so we just finished creating this. And I thought, you know, you can even use washi tapes to decorate all these, you know, to be really crazy fun. I really like this silver washi, and I was going to try to add this into... I didn't do... I didn't cut... A, I didn't trim out the B the B to use on this one, because I knew I was going to make Valentine's Day. So I'll probably do a heart on the top of this one in maybe this color. And I'll probably put this one on the inside. Because when I close it, I can put a little, maybe a magnet or a Velcro closure so that they have to open it. And then on the inside will be my little saying, whatever I want to do. So let's go ahead and I should probably do my stamping first so I don't put it in in case I make a mistake. I can always change that. I really want to use the silver. We should maybe put it on the gray. I don't know. Let's say all you have is white. You could go ahead and put washi across it and make a whole new looking one too. Let's go ahead and put some silver on the inside of this. I'm going to come back in and trim these off in just a second with my scissors. Because I want this red to show. Otherwise, I would just tuck this behind like this. But I want, I'm going to close this so I'm not going to be able to show. So, and I don't want it to show. beginner or even um, an intermediate to advanced like me and you're trying to do a project like this you're trying to follow along with us on here just know that you may not walk away with one that is completely finished and done like this when you're done with the video many many times I will find a video on something I've never made and I will watch it and re-watch it and re-watch it maybe two three times until I feel confident in the steps. Because like I made a mistake, right? So if I'd have been following along right on my heels, I made, would have made the same mistake and wasted some paper. Once I'm confident that I have the measurements and stuff, thanks Kathy Godwin, that's so sweet of you. So right below where we're commenting, there's a little dollar sign where you can give a one-time pledge of whatever amount you want during the live streams. And so I really want to appreciate um, Kathy Godwin right now for pledging a dollar right now during this live stream. Thanks Kathy. So you may have to watch it a couple of times before you attempt it. Then make sure you have all of your supplies and then watch it again and do it step by step. I still do the same thing. I still rewatch. I still redo. I still, even after I do that, make mistakes and have to make another one again. Like I said, I did this one. I made a cheat sheet so that I could follow along to make sure that when I'm showing you, it turns out right. Lost my cheat sheet and still made a mistake on this one. You guys, we are all imperfect, but we're all here because we enjoy creating things. So find the joy that you have in creating these things. Do it your own unique way. And then take it over to Quality Crafts and post it so that we can be inspired by whatever it is that you make. Because my crafty stash is different than your crafty stash, which is different than his crafty stash, which is different than hers. And that's what makes us unique and what makes this so much fun. Because everything is always different. It's awesome. 
So I added a little bit of silver and I think that looks really pretty when you open it up. So they'll have another little um, surprise when they get inside of this little envelope here that I've sort of created. And I'll probably put a little, like I said, a Velcro closure or something on there. I can't remember how I closed that last time. I already bent it one way so it would close. There we go. This one bent. So I could cut this at a diagonal and make it look like an envelope if I wanted. I kind of like that. So I didn't do any stamping in this yet, but I want to. Pretty much everything else is done. If you want to run another little washi around your cover like I did, I added this one because I wanted it to match the bee more. And so how cute is that? That washi matches the bee, which still pulls in the yellow, and then the black is still a really fun extra pattern in there to go with the black and the bee. Just really fun. Play around with the color patterns that you have in your papers too. So let me move this on. Yeah, it shimmers. It's totally a silver. If you're looking for that silver washi, I'm pretty sure that's the one I got from my store. Go ahead and look, look for that in the store. And then I'm going to stamp my sentiment right in here. Now, this is pretty darn plain, you guys. These, this can be done in so many different ways. Like I showed you in this one, I cut the corners completely off of these two. A lot of people cut all four corners off all of them so that when you pop off the cover, the whole thing, it just falls right out falls right open. This one is slightly different, plus it's a little bit smaller because we only use six by six. Try a three by three or a four by four. See how tiny you can get. I just think they would be super fun if we did that. Um, but you could do all kinds of stuff with this. You could make this, where's my five? You could make this with fringe. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's say I want some fringe on the side here. You could go ahead and just use your five bladed scissors and cut some fringe into it. Look at that. Now we've got a little fringe going on in that card. You can add um, jewels like I have. Do you see that? The little jewels here. I did a little bit of stamping. That's another thing that you can do. Let me go ahead and just do the other side the same way. fun with it. This is where we find our joy. This is where we relax. This is where we just have fun and we share these ideas with our kids and our grandkids and any, you know, friends and family and people that just really enjoy working with paper. I am a paper addict, but that looks really cute. What if we did that in green and we made that look like grass and we put Easter eggs in the middle and had this be like an Easter basket and when you popped it open, there was a bunny springing from the inside. I mean, gosh, guys, there's just no end to the different ways we could do this. That just makes it look so much different, doesn't it? I mean, there's, oh, I don't have a stamp ready for this. Well, we've got about 10 minutes, so let me just grab one quick. See if I can find a quick Valentine one in my May May Made It stash. I haven't seen one recently, but I wasn't looking for Valentine's at the time. Oh, there's hearts in this one. Let's use this. Oh, this one's really fun. It has love, a feeling or st of strong or constant affection for a person right here. And then we could even stamp some of these little hearts if we want. If you're looking for this one, I do not have it linked because I just picked it, but it's called Define Emotions. So let's just go ahead and just pop this love one right in there. Yeah, I have an itch right here. Grab a block, grab some ink. This is the first time I've ever stamped with this one. You might want to, if you don't know your stamps very well, go ahead and stamp it on something else before you stamp it inside. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna let her rip. I'm pretty confident with her stamps in this ink. We should get a d pretty decent turnout. Cool. Alrighty, let me just go ahead and get a baby wipe. 
and just wipe off my stamp so I can put it back. That way I won't lose them. And I'm going to do, I have a big heart and a little heart. I'm just going to use one of these hearts. And I'm going to use a red. And I didn't bother to match it up because I didn't know I would be stamping. So let me just grab this red. Yeah, it's kind of a dark red, but that's okay. It's Valentine's. Nobody's going to say anything. Your red was too red. I won't accept that Valentine from you. <laughs> if you guys are looking for Amazon codes, they're located on my store, qualitycrafts.com. Upper right hand corner, click on store and then wait for that page to generate and scroll down to the bottom. There's lots of links. If you go in through any link, um, no matter what you buy, even if you don't buy the thing it was linked for, it will still give a small commission to Quality Craft. So that's a really great way that you can um, support our community here. I'm going to go ahead and put a heart here. Oh, that's so cute. And I'm going to put one on the bottom too. Fun. Look at that. Now, if you don't want this not filled in look, don't use Tim Holtz Distress Inks. Use a regular ink that's going to give you a full coverage. I knew that that one would turn out that way, and I'm okay with that. That's why I didn't mind using the Distress Ink, but just know that that's what will happen if you use it. I could have restamped it and restamped it or used the stamp press, but I decided that I really like it that way. Because if you look at these hearts in here, they're not really full either. They've got little patterns on them, so that's really cool. Just put it in like that. Look, and it matches. Excellent! I totally love this. Let's go ahead and glue it in. Put some glue on this inner square. And then like before, I'm going to bring up my sides. Make sure that I'm right in that square so that when I close up my card, I'm not having a problem. All the links for the supplies, um, most of the supplies I used for this video, are linked in the description box below. So you don't even have to go over to the store if you just want the ones from today. There we go. Now, I could put a little closure on there, or I could just leave it as is and close it up and put the cover on. Super sweet. Okay, now, if you guys want to know how to make that, um, it's super easy, but maybe some of you guys have never seen that, so that it boings like this. Um, and I'm just going to use a couple of these scraps I chopped off. Get two pieces of paper like this two thin strips and put a little bit of glue on one end and glue that strip down. They should be two of the same size strips. I usually use like a quarter of an inch, quarter of an inch strip. And then once you have them locked in like this at a 90 degree angle, you fold one over and then the other one over. Down and you just keep um, one and then the other, taking turns, swapping sides, okay, until it's as tall as you want it to be or you run out of paper, whatever. You know, if you get it, stop and look and go, okay, I think that's pretty good, or no, I need a couple more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then lock it in by gluing the last piece together and then simply trim it off. And there you have your little bungee eye. And then you just put a little glue on here and put your image on the top. And that way, ding, 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 it just bounces, bounces. And this is a lot sturdier and it might, if you use, use printer paper, it'll smash down so thin that you'll be able to mail it without having to add an extra stamp. Good idea, right? So go ahead and do that. If you want to add, not on a card like this, I'm talking if you want to add this spring to other cards. Obviously, you're not going to mail a card like this unless you're going to pay postage to put it in another box, right? 
So that's how you would make that spring and you would glue it to that side and then glue um, some kind of image or whatever you want on the top. I'm going to go ahead and let me see where that paper went. Yeah, let's use one of these and cut this into a heart. I hope I have enough here to cut a heart out of this. Oh, you're welcome so much for sharing the springy thingies. <laughs> They're so easy to make, you guys, and you don't even have to buy those things. Although, I'm always tempted to buy them just because. the They're called wobbles because they're just so easy. You can do them out of um, wire, too, but I think the paper ones are way easier. But really, really, use printer paper so that they're not so bulky if you're going to put them on another kind of card. So let's go ahead and just put this one on here. They do turn a bit when they pop up. So put it on, decide how you want it to be, and then wiggle it. You know, use wet glue so that you can move it if you don't like the placement. And then... I don't really like the shape of that heart, but I'm going to glue it on anyway. So you can see it working in action here. I'm glad I got a chance to get in this last little tip, you guys. This is a really fun technique to use on cards. So now it wobbles. Dun, dun, dun. It may not look like it in the video, but it, it wobbles and it's sturdy. Do you see that? Look at that vibration you get from that. It's so cool. So do you see how it's, when I press it down, it's straight, but when I let it go, it's kind of tilted? That's what I mean. Like, if you want it to be not tilted when it pops up, then you want to put it on and turn it, and then pop it up, and then move it again, okay? Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and like this video on your way out if you haven't already done that while we've been chatting and building here. Create something that's uniquely yours today and join us over at Quality Crafts. Here's the inside of this one, and here's the cover. And here's the inside of the B one, and here's the cover. Let's see if we can get both of those in there. Julie, thanks for bringing that up. So if you're a new subscriber, make sure you click on the little bell that will notify you when I go live and when I put new videos out so you don't miss any of them. If you're not getting notifications, the only thing I can say is that, knock on wood, if maybe you unsubscribe, resubscribe, and hit the bell again, that it might reset that notification process for you. I know at least two people have come to me and said that, um, that they are not getting the notifications anymore. I'm so sorry. That's happening to me on other channels that I'm subscribed to as well. And that's the only thing I can come up with is unsubscribe resubscribe and hit the bell and hopefully that will reset your notifications okay so <laughs> that's funny marcel my hubby just came home and came in to the chat i'm like excuse me jen is live <laughs> okay so these are going up on i'll take a picture of both of these over at quality crafts on facebook join us there on our main page you're going to go up to the left and click on photos and then down to the left a little bit, click on albums, and then click on mini explosion box. And make sure you leave a picture of what you created using what we've done today. I will get a lot of inspiration from that as well as the rest of our community. And I can't wait to see you guys next video.